Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry and I'm going to take you through very briefly this infrared spectrum of an alcohol. Now what we're looking at here are obvious big peaks that tell us lots of information that this is an alcohol and really for an alcohol we're examining this region just at the far end up here. Now don't forget in the exam you will have your data sheet like so, so I'm just going to have that alongside this for while I'm doing this bit. And you can see here this large scoop shape here, so it really is this scoop shape, that peak shape being to the left of a thinner peak, which is often jagged, this is a big trademark for an OH alcohol. Now, if you look on the data sheet, so you look in just here at the very bottom, we're looking at 3200 to 3600 as our region for this, and you can see it's in wave numbers just at the bottom here, it's not too important because you'll always have that axis, so it's okay. And you'll always have them here, of course, on your data sheets, there isn't going to be a question about that, is there? So we've got this OH alcohol. You'll notice I've actually explicitly written that this is the OH alcohol as well, this whole peak moving down here. And the reason I'm saying that is if you look on your data sheet, you've got the OH for a carboxylic acid, which is in a very similar place. And if you just write OH, often in the exam there's this underlined or in bold insisting that you have to have it as part of your answer. You'll notice though that that peak for the OH carboxylic acid would actually be more this way and it would end up overlapping a lot more with this peak. Not to say that these alcohol peaks don't ever overlap with this peak to the right, but sometimes um, they do. But the OH of a carboxylic acid is incredibly more likely to overlap and just give one big broad peak in this region. Now this skinnier peak here, which is often much more jagged than this even, to the right, this is the CH. That doesn't necessarily identify it as an alcohol, but it's important to notice that these are two separate peaks at the moment. Now looking at the rest of our spectra then, you can see there's a tiny little peak just here and we're going to ignore this. We've not been given any extra information in the question that this was from, so I'm not going to concentrate on this tiny little peak just here. You might think, oh, that looks like an alkene one, but there's another example that does include an alkene peak, uh, which you'll find on the channel, and you can have a look at that one and see how sharp and how major they'll make that peak if they want you to notice it. You may be looking at this region over here and thinking, oh, how am I going to examine all of that? Don't have to. This is referred to as the fingerprint region, and it can be matched to a database of fingerprint regions to figure out exactly which alcohol this is because we don't have an identity for it but you won't be asked to delve into here in the exam however what they might do because they have actually got the fingerprint region values labeled up on here they may ask you to quote a peak that you would expect to find for fluoroalkanes or perhaps an ester something like that now fluoroalkanes there on the as spec and this actual peak region just here was never on the old data sheets and they've not used it yet at the time of publishing this video. So we expect that they may actually get you to predict something like that um, in the exam. So hopefully that clears up the kinds of things that we could do with the spectra just at a glance, but also then how could you use this in organic synthesis? Well, you could actually use this to monitor the progress of a chemical reaction because you could take some of your sample and you could see, for instance, if you were oxidizing an alcohol, we know that alcohols can oxidize to three different things. They can oxidize to aldehydes, they can oxidize to ketones, Obviously, this depends on the classification of alcohol, but they can also oxidize to carboxylic acids. And the aldehydes can become carboxylic acids as well, but we're concentrating on the alcohol just here. And what we would look for is, we would look for, over here, a C double bond O peak. Now, the C double bond O peak, just to reiterate, we always use our data sheet for these regions. We've got 1630 to 1820 for that C double bondo, and we would look for the presence of that very major, which means it's gonna be quite a long peak appearing in here, and if we were making an aldehyde or a ketone, this OH peak would diminish and disappear, whereas that would appear and that would tell us that the reaction had been completed based on that sample from the mixture. But if it was a carboxylic acid, we would notice that this OH would perhaps move to the right and the C double bondo peak would appear. So two ways that we can tell that this alcohol hasn't oxidized just yet is that we still have the OH and we don't have a C double bond O. I hope that clears up all of infrared spectra for you when identifying alcohols. I'll leave you to the rest of the organic playlists. Happy revising.